Live again in the Atlantic City Convention Center as Lennox Lewis and Shannon Briggs warm up in their dressing rooms. Yet to come, their heavyweight championship fight here in the ring. And we welcome you back. Once again, HBO boxing analyst Larry Merchant, you've told us your answer to the question of how you felt about Briggs getting this title shot. What do you think about Lennox Lewis giving the shot to Briggs when he couldn't get a fight with Holyfield? Well, for a prize fighter who promotes himself as Mr. I'll fight anyone, anywhere, anytime, handpicking his next opponent from the top 25 or 50 in the division may add to his bank account, but it certainly doesn't add to his stature. Having said that, Lennox Lewis is responsible for one of the more shameful eras in American heavyweight championship boxing history. Three pretty good champions over the last decade in Tyson, Bo, and Holyfield. All of them have found a reason not to fight Lennox Lewis. They've ducked him. What makes it shameful seeming is that in the past, American heavyweights hearing about a challenger from Europe would be on the next plane and consider it a paid vacation. Muhammad Ali certainly would be on the next plane and he'd camp at Lennox Lewis's doorstep until they agreed to fight. Give this much to Briggs, Jim. He is here. And to the names of Tyson, Bo, and Holyfield, you can add that of heavyweight legend and people's champion George Foreman as another who along the way did not fight Lennox Lewis. But you pointed out Lewis lost a fight that nobody ever thought he could lose to Oliver McCall. Here he is again as a 12 to 1 favorite. Is he beyond the point where he could go to sleep, overlook an opponent, and go down the way he did against McCall? Or could it happen again? Yeah, you can easily. This guy's got all the equipment to get out there and do exactly what the odds say he should do win easily but also he has a tendency like a good wine that kept in the bottle so long you don't use it it turns bad a vice versa bad wine stays bad you can't take anyone for granted these are two big heavyweights anything can happen it shouldn't happen but it could happen theater of the unexpected as you saw in 1995 when lewis so shockingly lost to oliver mccall we've told you lennox's story several times over the years and it remains the same he's on the outside of the big picture looking in when you look at the heavyweight division through the 90s four names stand out mike tyson evander holyfield riddick bow and george foreman these men have several things in common each has been a heavyweight champion each has fought at least one of the other three and none of them has fought the fifth standout of the decade lennox lewis no one wants to get into the ring with a guy that big with a guy that has those kind of developed boxing skills and a guy who hits like that. No one wants to get in the ring with, with, with anyone like that and risk losing their championship and, and getting knocked out. That's the simple fact of why people are dodging him because they know that it's a risk when you hop into the ring with Lennox Lewis. The threat Lewis poses inside the ring is clear, but there are other factors that have made the risk of fighting Lennox Lewis outweigh the rewards. Some people think of him as Canadian, some people think of him as Jamaican, um, some people may certainly think of, of him as British. Um, he trains in America. Um, it's a little, a little out of focus, if you will. That confusing identity has hurt Lewis. He's never had the fan base in the U.S. that the other top heavyweights, all Americans, have had. And he's never been marketed exclusively by an American promoter. I believe he may have got a better opportunity if he was completely signed and managed by um, an American organization and he was an American fighter. In 1992, after winning the title from Evander Holyfield, Riddick Bowe was the new rags to riches success story. Bo took easy paydays against journeyman Michael Dokes and Jesse Ferguson because he felt there wasn't enough money on the table to risk his title against Lewis. And the left hook lands maybe he would have beaten Bo, maybe he wouldn't have, but that's the fight that had to be made to make Lennox Lewis a pay-per-view entity. And now here we are, how many years later, six years later, and Lennox is really in his infancy in terms of a pay-per-view attraction and hasn't really sold a big pay-per-view fight. In his comeback, George Foreman became boxing's celebrity icon. He developed something Lewis never had, the ability to sell a fight on his name alone. Lennox is all wrong. He was young, he was quick. 
He was equal in size to George. Uh, there, there was no way in hell George Foreman was going to fight Lennox Lewis. In 1996, Don King paid Lewis $4 million so Mike Tyson would not have to fight him. Tyson wanted a more lucrative match against Evander Holyfield. Not that Mike and I had any conversations, but uh, he must have thought it I, as I did that Evander Holyfield wasn't going to be too much of a problem for him. Of course, we, we all know he was, uh, he was very wrong. Now, rather than to unify the titles, Holyfield has declined to commit to a contract Lewis signed, most likely to take a much bigger payday against Tyson after his pending reinstatement. I think Evander Holyfield quite sensibly is avoiding him. And uh, from a business standpoint, I understand it. As a fan, it's hard to understand, but from a business standpoint, which boxing is, particularly when you talk on the level of 40 and 50 million dollar promotions, it's nothing more than a business event. Lennox Lewis understands boxing is a business, but thinks his inability to make these fights happen will have an unexpected effect. It will affect uh, boxing's marketability, not only just my marketability when it comes to not getting the fights that, let's say, the public wants to see, you know. Uh, the public is what keeps us alive, you know. Without them, you know, we're nothing. In a sense, we're entertainers, in one sense. We go out there and we put our lives on the line to entertain and to prove that we're the best. If we're not being able to do so, you know, we, we suffer. Lennox Lewis remains frustrated. The top heavyweights of his time have all avoided him. Yet until he gets that elusive chance to prove himself in the ring, he'll never be ranked among them by the general sporting public. Tail of the tape, but as George Foreman told you, two big heavyweights in there. Lennox Lewis, 243. Shannon Briggs, 228. Lewis giving away six years in age and has a one-inch height and a one-inch reach advantage. Punch that numbers, Larry. Routine numbers for heavyweights, but Lewis has done it against a better class of opponent. In the ring. Jabs more interesting because Lewis does throw many more jabs than Briggs, and Briggs is reported to have had problems with his left hand. We'll see if he throws even as many as 18 around as he has in recent fights. Ringside cynics say that it doesn't matter whether Briggs's hands are healthy because Lewis's hands will be the ones that matter. Rules of the bout with our unofficial ringside scorer, Harold Letterman. The Lennox Lewis Shannon Briggs fight is scheduled for 12 rounds using the new standardized rules for all world championship fights. There is no standing eight count, no three knockdown rule. Only the referee can stop the fight and you cannot be saved by the bell at any round including the 12th and final round Jim. and shannon briggs will be first to enter the ring manager mark roberts right there at briggs's right shoulder camera left hey we need the music once trained by the famous Teddy Atlas, trainer also for a long time of Michael Moore, trainer back in Mike Tyson's teenage years who worked with Tyson in the gym that Customato ran in Catskill, New York. But after his loss to Darrell Wilson, the only loss of his career, Atlas left him, essentially saying that he was never going to be man enough to live up to his giant natural gifts. Briggs blamed that defeat, at least in part, on an attack of asthma. He has a serious case of asthma. His management asked Convention Hall to clear itself of all the dust mites in this old dust bin. They might as well have asked to clear all the fish out of the Atlantic Ocean. There are a couple of ways to look at what Briggs might do in the first couple of rounds. He has been known to be a fast starter, throwing upwards of 70 punches per round in the first couple of rounds of many of his bouts. And of course, we know what happened to Lewis when he got off to a slow start against Oliver McCall, who came out firing. But on the other hand, Briggs started very cautiously when he went in against another big heavyweight with a big punch, George Foreman. 
The record for Shannon Briggs. He's won five straight fights since that loss to Darrell Wilson here two years ago. Counting the win over Foreman, that brought his record to 30 wins, one loss, 24 KOs. Lewis, accompanied by the man who's done such a brilliant job of training him since the loss to McCall, Emmanuel Stewart, at Lewis's left shoulder as he makes his way into the ring. Ten years ago, won the gold medal at the Olympics in the super heavyweight division. I've always felt, Jim, as I've stated here more than once, and if he was an American, uh, his crowd displeasing style would seem more pleasing and his sins would be more easily forgiven. sense he's in a no-win situation here if he scores a quick knockout he won't get credit for that because of Briggs's reputation if, it, if the fight even goes four or five rounds and the over under proposition is five rounds it won't do him a lot of good in the public's eye. For his part, Lewis said he would go after Briggs, quote, like a predator. He made it abundantly clear that he would hope to produce the same result here that he produced against Andrew Galata last October. That was a first round knockout in a minute and 35. Earlier in his career, under original trainer John Davenport and then later under Pepe Correa, Lennox Lewis was something of a cautious counterpuncher. Emmanuel Stewart has labored long and hard to make him an attacking fighter. And in his last several fights, he has gotten only lighthearted opposition at best, as his firepower has clearly intimidated opponents like Oliver McCall, Henry Akinwande, and Galata. The record for Lennox Lewis. Like Briggs, he has only the one defeat. That the second round knockout to Oliver McCall in London in 1995. He's won 32 fights, 26 of them by KO. Now let's take a look at a graphic which outlines the competitive situation at the top of the heavyweight division, a consensus of the major boxing magazines with our own editorial input. Larry? Well, Vander Holyfield is recognized as the heavyweight champion with Lennox Lewis as the top challenger and a belt holder himself. We included Michael Grant because he is being fast recognized as by far the most promising of the younger generation of heavyweights. And there's a live shot of Michael Grant who's ringside here tonight to watch this bout. You'll see him live on HBO's Boxing After Dark, May 30. Log on to www.hbo.com slash boxing while you're watching this fight. You can vote on who won each round, talk to other fight fans on our bulletin boards, and pull up boxer stats on the fly at www.hbo.com slash boxing. Now let's go to ring announcer Michael Buffer for the official introductions. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. On a 10-point bus system will be Anik Hongtonkong, Terry O'Connor, and John Stewart. And when the bell rings, your referee in charge of the action, Frank Cappuccino. And now, ladies and gentlemen, for the thousands in attendance and the millions watching around the world from Caesars Atlantic City, uh, let's get ready to rumble! <laughs> Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing blue, trimmed with white. He weighs 228 pounds. His professional record, an excellent one. 30 victories, 24 by knockout with only one loss. From Brooklyn, New York, ladies and gentlemen, here is the challenger, Shannon Briggs. You made it, you done, baby. 
And across the ring, fighting out of the red corner, wearing gold, trimmed with red and green, he weighs 243 pounds. After capturing Olympic gold, he now has a professional record of 32 victories, 26 by knockout with only one defeat. Ladies and gentlemen, from East London, England, presenting the reigning WBC heavyweight champion of the world, Good evening, gentlemen. You were both given your instructions in the dressing room. I want you to protect yourself at all times. Is there any questions from the Lewis? Nope. Any questions from Briggs? Both of you stop. Both of you touch gloves. Come on. Come on. Come on. One thing this fight has going for it, Jim, is that the expectations are so low. In the corner that it would almost have to exceed the them. Corner. Let's see All the way back. if it does. All the way back. All the way back. All the way back. Two sculpted physiques, two big heavyweights. Lewis comes out attacking, lands a right, a jab, and a little left. Briggs so far not firing. Now he fires a right hand. Fireworks early as Shannon Briggs tries to give as good as he gets against big punting Lennox Lewis. George Foreman, you landed nearly 70% of your jabs against Shannon Briggs. Is his head just too still? Well, my jab is not as long as Lennox Lewis' left hand. Lennox Lewis got an excellent jab, but he's got to establish his jab a lot earlier than he's doing. Came out swinging and missing. You got to get back to your basics. Now Lewis begins to fire the jab. After coming out looking for the knockout in the first 10 seconds, Briggs firing back more aggressively than he did early on against Foreman. Emmanuel Stewart believes that Shannon Briggs came into his own in the closing rounds against George Foreman. Stewart says Briggs is a lot more dangerous than anybody realizes because he became a man when he stood up to Big George for 12 rounds. In a boxing match, one guy has the reach and he has power. You, you, you've got to use your reach and conserve your power. And in the opposite side, Briggs just got to keep moving. Don't be a stationary target. Briggs' trainer, Carlos Alberne, told us that he felt as though Shannon would be fine as long as he moved in the ring, side to side, in and out, constantly moving to change things up against Lewis. He said if he backs into the ropes and stays there, he will be in big trouble. Lewis kills you when you're on the ropes. Right hand over the top by Lewis, more of a pawing effort. Briggs' movement early on has slowed down the Lewis attack. Lewis averages 35 jabs per round and wants to throw at least that many to keep Briggs off balance. Now it's Briggs who's attacking Lewis with his own jab. Shannon Briggs short with the right hand. Lennox Lewis patiently taking his time now after coming out firing in the opening 20 seconds. This is the most action that anybody's mounted against Lewis since Ray Mercer in 96. And there Briggs almost knocks the champion down. Shannon Briggs believing that he has hurt Lewis on the attack. And Lewis is wobbly as Briggs chases him across the ring. And Lewis holds on. It was almost Oliver McCall revisited as Briggs. Well, it's already exceeded expectations. Let me get this on. Take the time. 
rushing this afternoon. And if you do get hurt, tie your man up. You want to tie him up, okay? But just take your time. That's the problem. You see what? Well, from that punch, it looked like an off-balance punch, but he must have hurt hurt Lewis George more than we could see from that punch. And then he comes back again, landing that left hand again. And that was a real good left hand. Yeah, the earlier left hook didn't look that powerful, but apparently it stung Lewis. What a confidence builder that round had to be for Shannon Briggs. And as round two begins, Briggs meets Lewis more than halfway as he assertively walks across the ring. Now Briggs turns and winks at us as if to say, I've got this totally under control. Come on, that hands are This is a much looser, more confident Shannon Briggs than the nervous young man who came into the ring against you, George. Well, the problem was Lewis went out and tried to slug and knock him out rather than setting his knockouts up. You get this guy a little courage, and you're going to have a fight on your hand. But you get back to your basic left jab, get in control. Come on, come on. When I say then things can be different. Back, man. One thing that Briggs is doing very nicely is rolling with the bigger punches that Lewis has been throwing. Well, you train all week for a right-hand puncher. So what does the right-hand puncher come out and start throwing right hands? You got to fake the right hand, throw hooks, set the right hand up. Good jab by Briggs that time. Lewis only throwing 21 jabs in the first round. We told you his formula for success is to throw his average number of 35. So let's see if Lennox can get back to the energy level necessary go, to man. keep throwing his jab. Let him go, man. Break. Briggs come pounding on, away on, against on. Lewis's flanks as they stand along the ropes. Uppercut just missed for Lewis inside. Let him go, Lennox. You're holding him. You're holding, Lennox. Now, the referee will play a big part in a fight like this. You wonder who's he's gonna get, who nerves he's going to get on here. Right hand over the top. He said it didn't hurt, but it did hurt. Briggs, come on. Come Briggs on is here. playing to the crowd and to us. Most of those in the ringside seats are Briggs supporters. Good enough hook by Briggs. Hard right hand over the top by Briggs. Now Lewis is the one who shakes his head, as if to say I wasn't hurt. Shannon Briggs has made his presence felt in the first couple of rounds, and right now he looks like a heck of a lot more legitimate contender than a lot of people would have thought coming in. His strength is a factor. Well, he's doing a good job in the first couple of rounds, but when you start mixing it up like that, it plays in the hands of Lennox Lewis. He's an old warrior. He's been dropped a few times. He's been hurt a lot. You don't want to mix it up with this kind of guy. Win, hit, and move out of the way. Briggs should be doing. But you can see Briggs's confidence growing as round two inches toward a close. Lewis going back to throwing the jab, but by and large, Lewis has not stuck to his fight plan, and Briggs has taken advantage in the first two rounds, and now here comes Lewis with precise punches up the middle. Right hand over the top as the second round ends. The left hand has been the surprise for Briggs. He misses the right or it's blocked, comes back with the left, stung Lewis momentarily right there. Lewis came back strongly at the end of the round. Okay, let's go. Jab and the hook. And the hook. So in the first two rounds, Lennox Lewis looks anything like a world beater, and Briggs looks like anything but a stiff. Hard right hand by Lewis. Caught Briggs flush. The jab sets it up for Lewis. When he starts doubling up on the jab, Briggs can't see Lewis's right hand over the top. Briggs missing with the wild left hook. Lennox Lewis has made a statement with the jab in the opening seconds of this round. 
Lewis is really effective when he finds someone aggressive. Now all he has to do is stand back and throw his right hand. Bridge should on, always be loose, hitting and moving left and right. He's going to be successful if he continues to move, but you can't stand there and take those right hands on top of your head all night. Pretty, no one can. Pretty good action fight in the first three Stop rounds. Back. Stop punching both of you. Remember, the referee is going to play a great part in this boxing match. As he tries to keep the two of them from leaning all over each other. Well, if he keeps one and one guy or another, he'll get on his nerve and make him change his tactics. Now, Lewis is starting to establish his left jab, but he allows Briggs to walk around too much and re recover from the, the effects of the last left jab. When he's walking away, you just got a jab at his body. Forget about the head when he's walking away. When he gets stationary, go back to the head. Lewis isn't thinking body at all. He's strictly headhunting, working exclusively upstairs. At some point, Emmanuel Stewart might remind him to go to the body. Well, Briggs is thinking each round, each minute goes by as a tick in his favor. Keep this fight going, anything neck, can happen. Get off his neck. Lewis, just a pawing right, a little short with that big cross over the top. Briggs is going to waste a whole lot of energy shaking his head. Good mean right hand by Lennox Lewis. He's landed a bunch in this round. But when you hurt a guy, you got to go and do something. You can't sit there and let him talk you out of it. He allowed him to walk around and talk him out of his own power. Yeah, but give Briggs some credit. He's taken some very good right hands from a big puncher. That's true. And, and he fires, fires back, back with a left jab. Absolutely. Right on the kisser, as we say. And another one. So Briggs begins to reestablish in the closing seconds of the round. And it starts to become something of a boxing match. But Lewis is standing back whenever he wants. He throws his right hand. The time he comes back with a left hook, Briggs can get up off the canvas, but he's got to throw a right hand, fake it, and come back with a hook. Lewis is so confident of his big right hand, sometimes Stay he forgets neck, about Stay the left hook. Yeah. When he throws the left hook, he's doubly effective. Hard right hand to the body by Lewis. Working at close quarters, nice uppercut from Lewis. And later on in the round, this straight right hand, which Briggs, fortunately from him, George, rolled a little bit with and took some of the power out of. He did roll. I don't yep, know if it took any power out of it. <laughs> Round four begins. Harold Letterman, how'd you score the first? That was a left hook. <laughs> yep, tremendously quick, quick left to the one. Better hurry. Briggs has wobbled. Just as you said, George, when Lewis threw the left hook, that turned the tide completely. It's going to happen with a left hook. A guy trains in training camp for right hands. You throw a left hook, you, you get him. Right hand lands flush for Lewis. Briggs barely on his feet. Lennox trying to set up and finish. Can't get him down. Every tick goes by is a tick in Shannon Briggs' favor. Yeah, but that wasn't in Tannen Briggs' favor. <laughs> that was more than a tick. That was a top. <laughs> Six, seven, eight. You all right, man? Briggs right, trying man. to... Let's go to Well, work. the referee is allowing him a little too much time. Briggs trying to show the stiff upper lip, and Lewis trying to be patient. He's landing the right hand at will. Cappuccino is not going to allow him to keep landing the right hand at will. Step back out, and start Lennox. all over again. Briggs Ooh, is doing a better job right of defending hand. himself, but he's not holding on. Surprises Lewis with the left. Lewis.
Davis's momentum stalls as Briggs is able to hold on. We're midway through the fourth. Briggs startling Lewis with the leaping Ooh, left hands. Right hand. There's another right and an uppercut. Ah, no, no, shining on. Ah. Briggs showing a lot of courage. Lewis is a little tired himself. Well, when you're in a ring with a 228 pounder, you just can't just take him for granted. When you're not throwing punches, you gotta Come cover on, let's up. Let's not play games. Left there, uppercut man. by Briggs. Or by Lewis, I should say. Let him out, let him out, let him out, Lennox. Lewis trying to gather himself. that he's all right. Well, listen, this Could've guy, me. he's trying to prove to the world that he's not a fluke. And, you know, you just got to... certainly gotta has get... shown a lot of courage, yeah. as you say, Jim. He was accused before, during the Foreman fight, by us even, of not showing a lot of bravery. He is showing it here. No three knockdown rule in effect. Bell! But two knockdowns in the round as Lewis catches Briggs. Briggs catches Lewis back, but Lewis catches Briggs again. Right hand leaves are good. When you get close to him, right hand leaves are working good, okay? Right hand leaves and more left hooks now, okay? The right hand leaves are working good. Okay, okay, okay. Take your time, baby. Take your time. It's your party. You're doing your thing now, Max. You're doing your thing. Just put it together a little bit more. You got it? Right hand leaves when you get close to him. Right hand leaves, he you know, He looks, he sees the one too, but right hand leaves it off. And keep breaking in with the hook. The hook Take a so look at the first ball knockdown ball. early in the round. Briggs had been taking some big shots. That was the biggest of them all. Get that bottle out of there, man. Get that bottle. Hold it, hold it. When Briggs is making a mistake, you don't want to follow a puncher around. Make the puncher follow you around. Ever since Lewis started using the left hook and right hand leads, as you heard Emmanuel Stewart say, he's been devastatingly effective. Every kick goes by, something can happen for Briggs. Another right cross, another left hook. Lewis landing flush with too many power punches. Just too much punishment. Let him go, let him go. Back off, Lennox, back off. Briggs popping Lewis with the left hand. Lewis almost ignoring Briggs' offense at this point as he just sets up and tries to fire power punches and get his man out of there. Now, when you have an opponent like Briggs, and that will be it. Shannon Briggs will not get up from that. Well, six. He proves me wrong. Seven. Proves me wrong. Eight. Still got the courage to get up and go for more. All right. Pro big Briggs crowd screaming for their man. Lewis has just hit him with too many right hands, George. Yeah. Bravery. Bravery for which Briggs is going to pay. Well, if you're in New York tonight, you can be proud. You know, this guy's shown, hey, I'm just not a... He slipped down that time. And that's all. Yeah. Good enough. Good enough. Briggs begging Cappuccino for another chance. But he was already in the danger zone. Table, Let me tell you, for boxing, that was a must-have fight. This guy, Shannon Briggs, supplied to us boxing fans what we needed. When you're out, get up anyway. That's what we needed.
You can say whatever you want, but this man was brave tonight. Oh, no question. That was a very brave effort. And then he came back and not try to cover up and run. He went toe-to-toe -to -toe with a puncher and got the worst of it. On the other hand, Lennox Lewis weathers some stormy moments, appears to be a little bit flat, and nevertheless makes his point in the end. Yeah, well, in a championship match, you got to be careful. The momentum can meet you in the ring or it can carry you into the ring. Sometimes with Lewis, the momentum was there and he didn't catch up until a lot of rounds. So, and it leaves you numb sometimes. You don't even know what to do with your left and right. You're just standing out there like you're on a television show. It can really mess up a fighter. Yeah, but another point is this, fellas. If a, if a 12 round championship fight can be seen as a mile run, it's a little easy to go out and run like hell for the first half mile and have nothing left later on. That's and that's what Briggs did, did. Because you did it all the first round. Well, let's take a look at the first knockdown in this fifth round. Lewis fainting by looking to the body while he fired upstairs. Yeah, he went down to the bottom a little bit to establish his jab to make the guy drop his hand just a little bit, turn his head and on the side of the ear, and you go down. And... Uh, and now here is a look at the end of the fight, and Lewis had landed several more right hands. It was an accumulation of right hand after right hand early on in the fight. He thought he could take it. He felt like, hey, this guy's not that powerful. But when you accumulate that kind of power from, from a 248-pound man, no one can stand up to it. He and that was the second the knockdown as he goes down on his own swing, simply having absorbed too much punishment. Lewis showing there his capability of throwing punches and bunches. He landed an uppercut, a little left hook, another right hand, and eventually Briggs swung, missed, and went down. Lewis earned his money tonight. You can believe that. Yeah, that was not an easy outing as Lewis was wobbled in the first round. The ropes kept him up as he went backward into the ropes. He would claim, I'm sure, that he was pushed, not punched, into that precarious position. But nevertheless, it reminded you of the, the Lewis who was out on his feet against Oliver McCall in the second round in London a few years back. Let's go to Michael Buffer for the official particulars. And referee Frank Cappuccino calls a halt to the bout. The official time, one minute, 45 seconds of round number five. The winner and still WBC heavyweight champion of the world, Lennox Lewis. A round of applause, ladies and gentlemen, for the challenger from Brooklyn, New York. Final punch stat numbers, and you can see that Lewis landed 96 more punches in the relatively brief tour of duty, threw 113 more punches, and landed at a connect percentage which uh, suggests that Shannon Briggs' health would have been in danger had the fight gone any longer. I agree. Jabs, and you can see that Lewis finally did up his jab output toward the end, landing 66 out of 117 and landing at close to a 60% rate. Briggs simply needs to learn to defend himself better against the stick. And now let's go to Larry Merchant with the winner, Lennox Lewis. Thank you, Jim. Congratulations, Lennox. What surprised you about Briggs tonight? Nothing really. Uh, he had a little game in him. I kind of made it personal, so, you know, that made it more of a fight. You're saying that he was a little braver than you expected? Yeah, he was. A, I mean, he got off the ground three times, so he had to, basically, because he did a lot of talking before this fight, so he had to back that up. Did he hurt you in the first round when you staggered back to the ropes? I was kind of off balance and he hit me in the back of the head. But, uh, you know, when he jumped on me, I realized that, you know, my defense is too good for him. Were your legs giving you problems because it seemed through the second and third rounds that you needed a blow every time an exchange happened? No, not really. I mean, seeing the whole, the whole week before the fight really affected me, but... Uh, you know, these are certain things. You, sometimes you're not really 100% some fights. and Some fights you go down to 80%. Well, give yourself a grade then for this. I would say uh, I was about 80%. What turned the fight for you when you started to respect the fact that he was a young guy trying to win the title and he, and he uh, swung a big left hand and got you a couple of times? Did that pull yourself together? Yeah, really. I mean, I love it when a fight's really interesting. And uh, I'm glad that he came to fight and didn't really come to pop out. And, uh, you know, he made the fight really interested. And, and I just wanted to work on a couple of things, and I felt good in there. Thank you very much, Lennox. Let's go, let's go. Jim. It was for dudes. 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 It
And here's a look at the final scorecards in the bout. You see that Lewis was leading on all three scorecards, although two judges gave Briggs the first round. One judge gave Briggs the first and second rounds, but Lewis eventually able to seize command in the fight, and he was ahead at the time when he scored the knockout over Shannon Briggs. Well, George Foreman, and maybe it wasn't Lennox Lewis's most polished performance, uh, and perhaps looking back, Lewis was necessarily distracted by his disappointment in not being able to lure Vander Holyfield into fighting him, but ultimately, Lewis is able to right himself and make his point, I'm sure. On the other hand, there are a lot of potential opponents who will look at this and say, he's still vulnerable. I don't know, you corner a cat, and let me tell you, he will scratch you. He cornered a cat tonight, and that cat started to scratch, and he almost scratched with some success. Uh, so it wasn't that uh, Briggs was that good. Lennox Lewis was caught by surprise, as we often do when we overlook and start looking down to being called the greatest of all time, things of that nature. But that cat was scratching tonight. If he had just kept going, Lewis was a bit tired, if you ask me. What about of landing right hands, that is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'll wear you out. <laughs> what about Emmanuel Stewart's theory? that Briggs grew up and became a man in his 12 rounds in there against you? I think so. A lot had to do with that. Uh, the commentary that uh, you guys did on HBO. It made Briggs say, hey, look, these people are saying things. He I was angry about myself. what we said. And yeah. that's what we need to do, make a lot of guys angry so they can get out there and give us the best. That could possibly be the fight of the year right there. All right. But Lewis stretches his record now to 33 wins, one loss with 27 knockouts, and continues to wait for a possible chance against Evander Holyfield to try to prove that he and not Holyfield is the best heavyweight in the world. And Larry Merchant stands by now with a valiant Shannon Briggs. Thank you again, Jim. Shannon, you seemed to stagger him in the first round. Did that entice you into more of a slugfest than you had planned for? Yes, Mr. Merchant. Um, and I heard him. I heard him a couple of times. I heard him in the second round too. But um, no excuses. You know, he he won the fight. Good champion. Uh, I could have been better tonight. A lot of personal problems. I don't want to sound like a crybaby or anything, but you know, again, I wasn't at my best. No excuses. He's he's a better man. He won tonight. I'll be back. I'm young. I'm 26 years old. You Did know. you have another fight plan in mind? Uh, not not really. You know, I wanted to use the ring and challenger and Lee also, but he was a little better than I anticipated as far as his range. He, he held his range pretty good, but I heard him. I knew I could. I felt strong, but, you know, I, I slacked off mentally and fit a little physically in my training because of some personal problems. But I'm going to be back, man. I'm, what are you talking about? You've mentioned that twice. What personal problems? Well, you know, you know, just some personal things that happened in my life that I, I kind of lost my focus. But I, I'm sorry to those who looked for me to win this fight. I know I could have won. I'm a, I'm a t very talented fighter. I, I, you know, I'm just... <laughs> <laughs> you know, I just got to come you, back to Did you shot. feel that after the Foreman fight and everything that went with it, that you had to go out and prove that you were courageous? Well, what, what, I, what I mean when I said some personal problems, I kind of let the media and, and, and what happened in the last fight affect my training early. I didn't really get too serious into my training until about a month ago. I, I, I mentally let that bother me and, the, the, you know, what people said and what you guys wrote and said about me. I let that affect me. And that's, that will change with maturity. And I learned something from that, but a little bit too late. But I am a great fight. I'm coming back. I'm strong. I'm fast. I hurt him. He, you know, he hurt me with some good shots. He didn't hit hard as George, but he hit very – he had a good right hand. But I'd seen his punches. I took him. I felt great. It's just that I, I, I wore myself out, really, from bla trying to blast him in the first round. Thank you very, very much, Thank Shannon. You, Thanks for a good fight. Thank you, sir. Once again, Jim. Well, uh, we, we all hope for Shannon Briggs to escape the devils of a life that has been way too tough and unfair up to this point. On the other hand, personal problems are one thing. Defending yourself against a big right hand is another. The sport is about technique, and he still needs better technique, George. Well, the problem was he wanted to prove that he could take that right hand by Lennox Lewis. And in the earlier rounds, he started to take too many of them. They accumulated, and they did damage in the end. He should never have been able to exchange punches like that with a punch. He should have kept running out night. All right, let's see what Briggs, if they would have paid as much attention to teaching him how to be a fighter and to being patient in getting him to where he can handle a shot at a title, instead of putting so much effort into marketing this kid, maybe he would have turned out to be a good fighter. He basically didn't belong in the ring with this fighter tonight 
with Lennox Lewis if the, if the point of it was to win the championship. He was not ready to win the championship. It's not unusual for a guy to come out and make a fight of something for a few rounds. Maybe he has the ability to go back to the drawing board and do that. I think they're more into marketing than fighting, frankly. Yeah, so maybe the point was to squeeze one last big paycheck out of what has been a largely trumped up career. In a way, yes. I mean, what we saw was perhaps what people saw in Briggs early in his career of why they would be attracted to him. But you got to put in the work, and I don't think they put in the work. Well, as, as I said to George, he lacks technique, and uh, he certainly didn't come... They tried to make a sting. Remember I used the term sting earlier, a, a con job. And at the end of the day, they got stung themselves. They, they settled for a nice payday here tonight instead of bringing them along patiently where maybe one day he would have made a hundred times more. Maybe. Now, probably not, although, of course, time goes on forever and lives are long in the heavyweight division. Aren't they, George? I'm telling you, I think that uh, Briggs did a great job tonight. Got up off the canvas. Listen, if, years ago, Joe Lewis was fighting Billy Kahn, and he didn't get the... Billy Kahn didn't have Joe Lewis rattled like this guy had uh, Lewis rattled tonight. Billy Kahn will go down in history. That fight is one of the greatest fights of all time. If there weren't so many good fights around, we could do the same thing for this fight tonight. This guy got up off the canvas by a right-hand puncher, bravery. And I don't care how many years you stay in the business, you're not just not going to beat. That's not going to happen. As the wonderfully polite Shannon Briggs would say, thank you, Mr. Foreman. Yeah. <laughs>